Welcome to Sunday Worship here at First Baptist Church of Bushnell. Today is May the 17th. It's hard to believe, but this is already week number nine of us meeting this way via Facebook or YouTube. I've prepared a very unique sermon today. Uh, I guess every sermon's unique because they stand alone, but I'm going to start a journey today that will take us for several weeks through the book of 2 Corinthians. You know, there are some that will tell us that the book of 2 Corinthians is a book of encouragement. And what I see around us today is that we have a lot of people that are in need of encouragement. So I pray that if that's true of you or you know somebody that needs encouragement, you would encourage them to join us today or to join us in the future because this uh, webcast will be available for you to watch at a later time. We'll be looking at the first chapter of 1 Corinthians in just a little bit. I'm glad that you chose to be with us today. I know you have a lot of choices. There are a lot of churches out there, but I'm glad that you are with us today. I pray that you'll hang in there with us for the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And I ask you to stay to the end because I do have a very important announcement about next Sunday's worship gathering. So please stay with us until the end. I'm going to take a moment now to pray as we begin, and then uh, Pastor Brad will come and share about our online connect card and our monthly memory verse. Let's pray. Father, I praise you for who you are and for this new day that we have, a day that you've designed for us to come aside and to worship you. Lord, I thank you for the freshness of your word, how it speaks to our very points of need. No matter who we are, where we are, what our challenge is, you stand ready to be there with us, to walk with us, to speak to us. And Lord, that's what's so unique about you and your word. It uh, speaks to us and you desire to gather with us individually and together in our families, in our homes, wherever we may find ourselves, even right now, you're there with us. Speak to us, teach us. Would you receive our praise as an offering to you, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, and thank you for joining us. My name is Brad, and I always get the pleasure of talking about our online Connect cards. If you go to fbcbushnell.org, and you scroll down to the bottom of the main page, you'll see our online Connect cards right there. Whether you have a need or a prayer request, or you want to learn how to become a member of our church, or you want to be more involved, or you just have a comment about our service, please fill that out. And someone would love to talk to you about any of that. I also get to talk to us about our verse for May. Every month we try to memorize a different verse. And we've been working on this one for, you know, about half of May. That makes sense. So, our May verse. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before you. Psalm twenty-two, twenty-seven. With everything going on, it's, it's always great to know that families were meant to worship God together. And that's what we want to do this morning. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our worship team. Good morning. We are so happy that you chose to join us this morning. We're going to be worshiping in song later on. Pastor Doug is going to be bringing the word. Right now, we just want to go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to just sit with you for a while and praise you and bring these songs to you. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
waiting on God to move. Sometimes it just seems like forever, and when he does, it may not seem like it's the direction we want to go, but truthfully, one of the hardest things we have to do is wait upon the Lord.
know that God lifts us up when we're down. He comforts us when we're weak. He just, he's on our side, guys. He, guys, he really is. No matter what God is or what people say about him, the one thing that we know for sure is in the book of Revelations, the angels gathered around and did nothing more than point to him, say, holy, holy, holy is our God. for being the God who is there on our side. We thank you for being a God who is able to handle far beyond what we're going through. God, we can lean on you. We can lean on you in times of good. We can lean on you in times of bad. And God, we just trust you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I said at the beginning, today we're going to begin a new journey through the book of 2 Corinthians. Uh, the title of the message today is, Be Encouraged, God is on Your Side. Many of you would remember an old song. It's a classic Western folk song called Home on the Range. The lyrics say this, Home, home on the range, where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy all day. Well, I wonder about you today. How is your range today? How is the place that you're living today? Is it all play? Is it uh, without any discouraging words? Is it all sunshine and there's no clouds in your area, in your life? Well, I dare say you do have a few challenges. Maybe you have a lot of challenges. I pray that today, as we walk and take this journey through the, the first part of this great book of 2 Corinthians, that you'll be encouraged today. The book of 2 Corinthians, as I said at our opening today, is a book of encouragement, and we're going to start a, a multi-week journey through it today. So I ask that you would grab a hold of these truths, make them yours. You see, if I 
simply say these uh, truths and you don't do anything with them, what good are they going to, to do? I believe God has given us His Word for us to have handles to grab a hold of and to walk with and to be encouraged even during these days. So I'd ask you to open your copy of God's Word this morning as we look at the book of 2 Corinthians, and we're going to begin there with verse number 1 and read through verse 11. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, to the church of God which is at Corinth with all the saints who are throughout Acacia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. But if we are afflicted, it is your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is effective in the patient enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. And our hope for you is firmly grounded, knowing that you are sharers of our sufferings. So also you are sharers of our comfort. We do not want you to be unaware, brethren, of our affliction, which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened excessively beyond our strength, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves, so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a peril of death, and will deliver us, He on whom we have set our hope, and He will yet deliver us. You also joining in helping us through your prayers so that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the favor bestowed on us through the prayers of many. Wow. Did you hear what was stated there? Paul had a burden for this church that he had planted there at Corinth. And he had three things he wanted to bring to their attention right at the beginning. He first wanted to be sure that they were reconciled one to another, that they were known for their forgiveness. He also wanted to share with them that his plans had been changed because of all that was happening in his life. He was not going to be able to come by himself at this moment. But most of all, He wanted to bring them comfort. You see, he had a heart for these people, and he wanted to bring them comfort. In fact, as you read through this very short book of 2 Corinthians, you will find the word comfort or the word encouragement used 29 times throughout the writing here. The word in Greek that's used for the word comfort or the word encouragement, which are right here together in the Greek. It means to come alongside. It it literally means to put your arm around. It, it, It means that someone is truly there with you. Remember who wrote this. This was Paul. And remember all that he went through. Paul, the same one that had been beaten, had been shipwrecked, had been in prison, had been sick, had been so misunderstood, he wanted to bring comfort, bring encouragement to those that he was writing this letter to. So what was his secret? How was he able to find comfort? How was he able to find encouragement? Well, it summed up in one word, G-O-D, God. You see, 
He knew who his God was. And he embraced God, and, and he embraced the comfort that God gave him. And he wanted to share that same comfort with those that he wrote this letter to. And he, God, would ask that we would embrace the same thing today. Do you need his comfort? Do you need his encouragement? I know many of us do. So, I would just remind you of what we're looking at today. Be encouraged. God is on your side. He's not just on the side of someone else. He is on your side. So let's launch into three simple points here today. First of all, we need to be reminded, and what Paul presents to us in the early verses here, is who God is. We need to regularly be reminded of who our God is. So, in verses 3 and the first part of verse 4, we see the fact of who our God is. First of all, we see God in three persons. You've heard of the Trinity. You've heard about the fact that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Well, we've even sung that in our hymn books. I believe it's hymn number three here in our hymn book. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. You see, right here in these early verses of the book of 2 Corinthians, we see God presented in His three persons. We, we are called to give Him praise, to recognize all that He is. First of all, notice that He is Father. There in verse 3, He, he is called Father. Well, how is He a Father? Well, because of His Son, Jesus. See, He is the Father, and we can approach Him as His children. You know, there's something special about the touch of a loving Father. There's just nothing else like it. And God the Father desires to touch you today, to walk with you today. Secondly, we see here that the Son took on flesh. Jesus took on flesh. And we see here the Lord Jesus Christ is talked about there in verse number 3. And remember what Jesus did. He went to the cross on your behalf. If you were the only one, He would have gone just for you. Oh, give Him praise today, won't you? And then He is described as the God of all comfort. Oh, Jesus told us about this comforter that was coming there in John chapter 14 and verse 26. John 14, 26, it says, Jesus said, But the Helper, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Praise God for His Holy Spirit that resides within us, that reminds us of all that God is and walks with us day and night, 24-7. Child of God, recognize all that your God is today. We also see in these opening verses of the book of 2 Corinthians that God is a God of mercy and comfort. We see God is all about mercy and comfort. I have a statement here, and I would challenge you to write this statement down because I believe it rings loud and clear about God's mercy and God's comfort. God, in His grace, gives us what we don't deserve. I'm going to say that again. God, in His grace, gives us what we don't deserve. You see, none of us deserve salvation. None of us deserve to be close to God, but it's due to His grace. But in His mercy, He gives us what we do not deserve. Oh, my 
Aren't you glad for God's grace and God's mercy? See, there in verse 3, we're reminded that He is the Father of mercies. He is compassionate. He understands all that you're going through. Have you experienced that recently? I know that all of us have kind of been turned inside out and upside down by all that we've gone through in recent weeks, months. Oh my. I pray that if you haven't received God's comfort, that you would embrace it today. It's there for you. This idea of God being the God of mercy, the God of comfort, is repeated over and over again. Just in the verses that I read to, uh, the earlier, verses 3 through 7, 10 different times, 10 times, the word comfort is used. You see, God intends for us to receive His comfort. It is there for the taking. Won't you reach out and take it today? God desires that we recognize all that He is. He is Father. He is Son. He is Holy Spirit. He is merciful. And He is the God of all comfort. Secondly, I would point out to you about what God desires to do through you. What God desires to do through you. You see, it doesn't just end there. He doesn't send all of this our way for us just to hold on to and never do anything with. No, it's there for us to do something with. You see, we're shown there in verse 4, 5, and 6 that we're to comfort others. God desires that I comfort others, that you comfort others. We should be known for those of us that walk with God. We should be known as those that bring comfort to others. When others don't, we should. In verse 4, it says, We have received comfort. Why? So that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. God has given you comfort in order for you to give comfort, in order for you to display all that He is. See, many times we have to show who Jesus is to someone that's not close to Him. That's His desire for us. That's what it means to be a kingdom person, that we love God and we love others and we show comfort to someone else. I want you also to see what another thing that God wants to do through you. He wants you to receive comfort yourself as you give comfort. You see, here's what I've found out. I've found this out firsthand in recent days. That when I'm feeling down, what I need to do is show mercy, to show comfort, to minister to someone else. God ministers to me as I minister to someone else. When I get the focus off of me, it's amazing how God just opens the floodgates. Will you experience that this week? Will you reach out and touch those? God desires that we receive comfort as we give comfort. In verse 7, it says, You are sharers of our suffering. You're sharers of our comfort. As part of the body of Christ, that's what we're called to do. Why didn't God just save us and take us to heaven right away? Well, one of the main reasons is that He desires that we demonstrate the transformed life, the changed life, the life that has been touched by Him. Oh, God desires that we show His grace and mercy. One of my favorite characters in the Bible is a man by the name of Barnabas. In Acts chapter 4, the very end of chapter 4, we get our first introduction into this gentleman. And we find out that he has a nickname. He is called the Son of Encouragement. Wow, what a nickname. Somebody that's known by their encouragement. You see, wherever Barnabas went, he brought comfort to others. 
And he simply exemplified what is shown there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 26. If one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. You see, it's that beautiful picture. You rejoice with those that are rejoicing. You weep with those that weep. That's what God has called us to do as the people of God. We need to be reminded that we're not to live as Lone Ranger Christians. You know, I heard someone say one time, even the Lone Ranger had Tonto. He didn't live by himself. You see, we're not designed to live life by ourselves. We're to share whatever is burdening us with someone else, and we're supposed to share the burdens of others. That's the beauty of the body of Christ. And you will receive comfort as you give comfort. Thirdly, I want you to see what God does for you. What God does for you. First of all, He gives His supernatural power. In verses 8 through 11, we see about His supernatural power. He permits trials. He, he permits challenges to come our way. He permits pressures to come from the outside. See, that's never an accident. God never allows accidents to come into our life. He has a plan for your life. I have repeated that over and over and over again in the last few weeks. He truly does for each and every life. But He does have divine appointments. He will allow things to come our way to mold us to shape us more and more into His image. He'll even use His heavenly sandpaper to allow tough things to come into our life, to shape us more and more into the image of Jesus. But He wants you and I to exercise our faith, to show His supernatural power living in us and through us. In verse 8, it talks about the fact that they lived beyond their strength. It wasn't their strength, it was His strength. Is His strength alive and well in you today? There are things that you're facing today that it's only in the power of God that you can face them. But be reminded that His power is your, your power in Christ Jesus. See, He wants to raise you up. God will never allow anything to come into your life that you can't handle. You know what? That's not true. We've heard that over and over again. Many would say, oh, that's true. That's a biblical verse. It's not. I challenge you to find it. Actually, it says this in verse 9. We are not to trust in ourselves, but we're to trust in God who raises from the dead. You know, there are many things that, that come my way that I can't handle. But I've learned that I can give them over to Him, hand them over to God. But what it requires of me is giving it over to Him. But I have to be living the surrendered life myself first. You've heard me repeat this verse many, many times, but I'll remind you of it again. It's there in Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. If anyone would come after me, Jesus says, he must deny himself, take up his cross. How often? Daily. You must die daily and follow him. See, the Christian life is a life that's sacrificed over to him. And we need to be reminded of that today. When we are surrendered to Him, His power becomes resident within us. We have resurrection power resident in us. And we're able to face things like no other. No, God will give you more than you can handle. But you know what? He can handle it. Be reminded of that today. I also want you to see in verse 10 that He delivers us. He delivers us. It, it tells us that He delivered us. He will deliver us. He has yet, will yet deliver us. The fact is, He has, He is, He will deliver us. Oh, what a promise. 
What a promise. He is the one that will rescue you from whatever you're facing. The fact is that if you're alive today, he has rescued you. There are things that have happened in your life that God simply rescued you you. If we took the time to to just go from person to person, whoever's watching this today, we could hear testimony after testimony after testimony of how God has rescued each and every one of us along the way. You see, He is the great rescuer. But be reminded that He rescued us. He delivered us because of what He did at the cross. He took on our sin. He took on a debt that we couldn't pay. And He paid it all. He paid it all for you and for me. And He did that because of His love for each and every one. And then lastly, in the last verse we looked at today, verse 11, He answers our prayers. He answers our prayers. God loves us for us to talk to Him. He loves to hear our prayers. He loves to respond to our prayers. And be assured of this, He responds to each and every prayer perfectly. Perfectly. So, do you believe in the power of prayer? Do you? Well, I believe most of us would say, well, yes. So, the big question is, what are you praying about? What are you individually praying about? Can you honestly say that you're praying to God about things going on in your life? Oh, we'll we'll pray for our country when we're going through a COVID-19. We'll pray for someone that, you know, is on their deathbed. We'll pray for someone that needs a job. We'll pray for someone that has a, a critical need. But what are you praying for today? What's God burdened your heart for? Is there something that you're praying to Him, you're pleading to Him about? I challenge you to consider that today. God alone is the burden bearer. We were never designed to carry the burdens. No, He wants to take on the burden that you are bearing today. So what about you? Will you talk to Him? Will you offer up your prayers? There are many songs that that minister to me, but there's there's one here near the back of our hymn book that that really ministers to me, and it it is uh, right on track with what we're talking about today. This is a song that came out back in 1990, so it's not an old song. It's one of the newer songs in our hymn book, but it's a beautiful song reminder of all that our God is. God will make a way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. His love and strength for each new day. He will make a way He will make a way. My question to each and every one of you today is, can you honestly say that for yourself? That God is making and will make a way for you. I trust that you are embracing that truth and making it true for you today. Remember who your God is. He is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He is the God of mercy, the God of all encouragement, of all comfort. Remember that God desires that you comfort others and that one of the best ways we can bring comfort upon ourselves is by touching and ministering, comforting others. And He wants to allow His resurrection power to be resident, to live through you as He raises you up, as He delivers you from trials and tribulations, as He protects you, and as He answers your prayers, would you be honest enough to offer your deep, heartfelt prayers to Him today? Life takes on meaning 
when you remember all that God is. And I want you to walk away with this one critical truth. God is on your side. He's on your side. Receive comfort in that today. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you are on our side. I thank you for how you open up this beautiful book of 2 Corinthians and how it speaks to the fact that you are a God of comfort. Lord, if there's one thing that our world needs now, if there's one thing that our country needs now, if there's one thing that this church needs now, it's your comfort. Lord, there are a lot of hurting people, people that have lost out on things, seniors and eighth graders and fifth graders and even kindergartners that have missed out on graduation ceremonies. There are those that have lost jobs, that have uh, lost their way of providing for their families. And Lord, uh, we don't see the end in sight right now. But we bow down before you. We recognize you in all of your wonder as the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the one that is merciful, that brings comfort and encouragement, even in the midst of the trials we face today. Lord, would we truly embrace all that we are in Christ and be reminded of your resurrection power that's resident within each and every believer. We need it, Lord. We repent. We agree with you. Confess that, that we have... Uh, been trying to do things on our own and we choose to turn away from that to change our ways as you change us from the inside out lord forgive us and may we walk in oneness with you beginning right now i pray for any that have yet to declare jesus as their lord and savior that even right now this would be the time of salvation for them Jesus went to the cross for you, for you. And he offers his gift of salvation. If you would but surrender your life to him and recognize him in all of his splendor, in all of his greatness, and just cry out to him as your Lord, turning from your sin and walking in oneness with him. Lord, we praise you. We give you this new week that you have gifted us. Would you be honored and glorified in us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Paul will be coming at this time and sharing with us about how you can give. And I just want to say a word about that. Church, you have been phenomenal in the last several months. Uh, we haven't said a lot about offerings, but I was able to do a little bit of math. And so far, up until uh, this past week, we're at 97% of our budget goal. So all I can say is keep it up. Our God is good. You guys have been great in your giving. We're continuing to give to the cooperative program that supports nearly 10,000 missionaries here in North America and around the world. And I just want to continue to encourage you in that way. So please stay tuned. And at the end, I have a special announcement about worship next Sunday. Well, you all know I'm here right now. And uh, over the last several weeks, uh, we've uh, just been able to celebrate what God has been doing. And God teaches us through many different ways. And uh, I've just got to tell you, my my God teaches me so many things through my children. My children are hilarious. And sometimes I like to play jokes on them, like wake up in the morning and shave my beard off and just see what they say. Uh, other times I like to uh, just play with them outside. And, and this week uh, God taught me, uh, it reminded me of a very special lesson. And, and while we were outside mowing the grass on Monday, we, we found a snail attached to the side of our wall, just a little tiny snail. And so I picked it up and I, I put it in a bowl with a little bit of water 
and we watch that snail kind of roll around in, in the water. And my kids, you know, they're so deprived because I don't let them have a pet. So they asked if they could keep the snail as a pet. And uh, then, then they started asking, you know, what do snails eat? And what do they need to live in their house? And, and all of these other things. And I had to Google it and look up, you know, what do snails eat? Uh, because I didn't know what they needed to survive. But as I was doing that, I was reminded that our God knows every single need that we have before we even ask it. I was reminded that, that our God will supply all of our needs, not according to our riches, but according to his riches. And so I'm so thankful that each and every one of you uh, give out of, um, out of the generosity of your heart that God has supplied us with. And as we get a chance to give back just a portion of what he's so graciously given to us, you know, we can worship with, with our voice as we sing, we can uh, worship at, with our lives as we respond, but we can also worship as we give. And, and it's just an act of worship is saying, thank you, Lord, for all of the goodness that you provide us with each and every day. And so uh, with that, you know many of the ways that we have to give. We have five different options that you can give. You can go online to FBC Bushnell dot org slash give and you can give that way you can also give um, by coming by the office you can give through the mail our, our address is 125 west anderson avenue bushnell florida uh, you can give through your bank uh, and then you can also give via text message you can give uh, just by simply texting the dollar amount that you wish to give to 833-718-0151 uh, however you choose to worship the Lord through your giving. I just want to say thank you and praise the Lord for your faithfulness and that, that awesome report that Pastor Doug just gave us about uh, how he is continually providing for our needs each and every day. So let's pray with me as we pray over the offering and uh, the, the many ministries that are supported through that. Father, we thank you so much for, Lord, how you provide for every single one of our needs. You truly are a good, good father. And Lord, you know what we need even before we ask it. So Lord, I thank you for the faithfulness of, of your children. I thank you for how you've blessed us and we're able to give back a portion of that. And Father, I pray that you would take uh, these gifts that are given, that you would bless them, that you would multiply them, God, that you would use them uh, all over the world, here in Bushnell, in the state of Florida, in the United States, and even as our missionaries go from country to country, spreading the good news. God, would you bless them as well and, and uh, help them to be fruitful and to uh, encourage them during these times. And Father, we pray right now that you'd be with each and every person that's watching and, and can hear the sound of my voice. God, I pray that you'd bless them in a mighty way. And God, that, that we would worship you today uh, because you truly are the great provider. Lord, we love you and we thank you for loving us. And I pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We've hoped you've enjoyed the service. We've hoped you've enjoyed this, the, the time we've spent in singing. Uh, I really don't know if I'm going to miss these, uh, these streaming events, not being able to see you guys. I, I'm, uh, my heart's telling me I ain't going to miss it. I'm looking forward to getting back with all you guys and when you're here uh, in the auditorium with us so we can worship God together. But no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you can stop and worship God in any time because the heart of worship is not in the place that we are. The heart of worship is with the place where our heart is with God. So as we remember that, we're gonna do this last song here. I love
God bless you. Have a great day. Well, I pray that today that this worship experience has ministered to you. And I, as we are about to depart, I just would remind you of a few things. Be reminded that God is truly on your side. He wants to provide you comfort. He wants to provide you peace as you continue walking through this week. I want to remind you of some changes that are upcoming for next Sunday. Next Sunday is May the 24th. It's the day before Memorial Day. And we're going to be recognizing our high school graduates that Sunday. Uh, Pastor Paul is going to be bringing the message. It's going to be a very unique uh, worship time. And I'm just very pleased to tell you that we're going to be worshiping here in our sanctuary. Now, I know for some of you, you're not ready for that yet, so just hang in there, but I'll, I'll talk to you about that in just a moment. Next Sunday, we'll encourage you, if you would like to wear a mask, we're not going to say you have to wear a mask, but I know that many feel comfortable wearing them, so if, you, if that's you, wear a mask. We'll have uh, hand sanitizer readily available throughout our sanctuary for you to utilize. Uh, we're not going to do our regular well Welcome time, so you won't have that time of handshakes and hugs and all that. We'll have to do away with that for a while. We're, we're going to allow our pews to uh, uh, be diminished somewhat in that we're going to be meeting or sitting in every other pew. So uh, you'll notice that when you come in, we're going to have some ushers to help you find a place to sit. And we're going to ask you to sit every other row and for family units to be spaced on the same pew at least six feet apart. Just the regular things that you have been told over the past many weeks, if not months. Um, we will not have Sunday school next week. We're going to hold off on having Sunday school, uh, Sunday night activities, Wednesday night activities, men's and ladies Bible studies. We're going to just hold that back for a little while longer. But next Sunday, 1030, worship here in our sanctuary. We're not going to have a nursery yet. We're not going to have children's church. We are going to have some packets ready for the children Pastor Brad is getting those things together and each child will receive one of those packets as they come in. Now, for those of you that are not ready to come back into our sanctuary, uh, for whatever reason that might be, uh, we will continue uh, live streaming the services. Hopefully by next Sunday, we're going to have a multi-camera system that God has allowed us to uh, get a hold of, and it'll be installed by next Sunday. But you'll be able to join us via Facebook Live and also on YouTube, uh, just as you have for the past nine weeks. So uh, be encouraged about that. So I want to to hear from you, if you have a ministry need, if there's something that we can do for you, it might be a gallon of milk, it might be that you're working on a special project for the shoebox ministry and you need someone to go and, and get some resources so you can continue working on that. Talk to someone just recently that was in that boat. Just let us know. We would love to meet your needs and we're here to minister to you. So as we depart today, would you bow with me as we pray? God, what a wonderful time we've had today around your word, singing praises to you, lifting our prayers to you. Lord, I pray that as we depart, that we will not just leave all the truth that we've sung about, that we've prayed about, that we've read about, that we've heard proclaimed. We wouldn't just leave it behind, but we would make it ours. We would walk in the truth. God, there are so many that need to walk in the truth. They need the hope that's only found in Jesus Christ. So God, may we be the ones that bring comfort, that bring joy, that bring encouragement into the lives of so many that need it. It might be right in our own families, in our own neighborhoods, or it might be somebody a long distance that we can connect with. Oh God, use us. For your honor and glory, you're a great God, and you are on our side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and have a great week.